Hello, I'm Paul Tranny, and I want to help you get started using Adobe Edge Reflow Preview. But first, what is Reflow? Well, Reflow allows you to design the responsive web. Uh, now, that means you can create and style web content with CSS visually, and then easily have that content reflow across different screen sizes, from desktop, from tablet to mobile devices, creating a truly responsive experience. All of this is done using CSS as well, which is really powerful. So let's go ahead and take a look at Reflow. Here I am in Reflow, and this is just a new project. And it actually has two items in it. It has this background, and then if I click here, it has this container. And just like uh, many tools you're familiar with, as soon as you select an item, you can see the properties on the left-hand side. So it gives me the properties for layout and then styling. So if, even if I click back here on this white, you can see that I can change the background so I can add a color. So it's pretty straightforward being able to jump in and change that color. I'll just keep it to a nice gray like that. And what that is is... CSS that I've just added. So if you'll notice right down here, I can see the CSS that was added as I selected that color. So just be mindful of the CSS that starts to get built uh, along the way. And let's take a look at the DOM. If I click right here, I have this DOM panel and it shows me the body and again the container. Okay, so I can select things this way or I can just click on it. But notice as I select this container, I can also you know, give it a color if I want to as well. And even in this case, I'll just make it a semi-transparent white. And you'll get into these cases where you want to be able to see your content a little more visually because this container actually has uh, these various um, grid lines. And this is good that it's set up in a grid-based system. So if I go to layout, I can change the number of columns say, for, for this particular layout. I'll just leave it at 12. But notice I can also adjust the opacity. Much better, I can actually see what my design is going to look like. All right, so again, just kind of bringing that down a little bit, about 60%. Now I want to start creating some items. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to draw out a couple of boxes. So using that box tool, I can drag out maybe like a, a box that's going to be my, my header image potentially. But I can, again, add a color right in here just quickly, having that space for that item. And I can see that it's added this element at that color. And again, if I select layout, I can start to see all of the properties. Uh, for that item. So notice that it has a size of about 102. So I actually stretch it out a little far, but I can always snap that into place and I can adjust that numerically right in here. Okay, so that looks pretty straightforward. In fact, let's draw out a couple more boxes. Now I'm calling these boxes, but what they actually are are divs. Okay, so I'm actually creating divs as I draw out these boxes. So let's just draw out three more, kind of like that. That looks uh, pretty good. I will use my selection tool to select all three of those. I want them to be all the same size and aligned correctly, and that's when I can use this little align panel, aligning the top edge and then matching the height like that. Okay, So that looks pretty good. I have these three boxes. And let's just see how this reflows from, say, for instance, your desktop down to something smaller, we can see how that content scales. Again, a case where I might want to take down the opacity of my grid, and you can see how that content reflows. You have a number of options, and uh, in fact, if I added even a, another box up at the top, you can see it right there. And what I can do with this box is I can even drop in, say, a fixed size. So I can have that 400 pixels. Okay, and what if I always wanted this centered? Well, I might jump down in here into advanced and make sure that, again, the center margin is set to auto and the float is set to none. So it actually shows me the CSS if I roll over that tool. So there we are. That will actually be centered, say, for my logo. Everything scales down, it looks good. I can start to add some text, some imagery, some other things. But really what I want to do is I want to scale this down for maybe a tablet device. 
because maybe at this point right here, I can start to adjust. And even it starts to break, if you will, as this reflows down here to this next uh, area. And what I can do is I can say, hey, you know what? Let's add a break point. Okay, so I've added a break point. I can adjust that easily. So I can, you know, make it 768 if I want to. There we go. And for this size, I can start to change this content. So again, these images or whatever content in here might get a little scrunched up. Again, an opportunity to have this content reflow. Uh, say, for instance, this first box, if you will, I can jump in here, change that to about 48%. Uh, okay. The second box, let's make it about 48% like that. And I can always visually adjust this as well. Okay. So kind of tweaking this design visually however I want taking this item and uh, again, maybe this one stretches out all the way across. Either way, you can see how I can reflow that content for a tablet device, scaling it down some more, adding another breakpoint, as many as I want. And when I add breakpoints, what I'm doing is I'm adding media queries. So for this last one, look at the number of columns. Now this grid system's nice, but I want to change it. Okay, so I might want to scale that down and maybe give it, uh, say, about four columns like that, okay? But you can adjust those grid options for each breakpoint. Again, manipulating this content, either numerically on the side or visually, it'll start to push that content down. And look what happens. It's like it's highlighted this blue. That's interesting. And what that says is there's a, that has actually changed for my tablet, uh, my tablet view, okay? So let's just change that to 100. See how it turned purple? says, hey, you know what, I've actually changed for the mobile view, okay? So that's what's going on there. Jumping in here, again, visually or numerically, I can modify this content. Lastly, jumping in here, making it about that size, and there I have the beginnings of my mobile layout. Uh, clicking on my tablet, there again is my tablet layout, clear up to my desktop. Pretty easy to do, pretty straightforward. It's pretty awesome what uh, Reflow can do. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a completed project. Notice here's my fully designed project. Everything looks good. I'll click on 768 to get that portrait view for a tablet. Now keep in mind, you might have this um, landscape view might look something like this where you have the four images. Portrait view has three images there. You can see those two columns. Going down to mobile, you can see how all that content reshuffles as well. Not only does the content reshuffle, but you can make design changes. And uh, there's more you can do, such as getting into adding edge web fonts, which is really powerful. But you can see there's a lot you can do with edge reflow preview. In fact, the last thing I want to do is just view this in Chrome. Okay, so again, the idea is you'd extract the CSS. So this is just a preview in Chrome, just like that message says there. It's not really production quality code. That's fine because I would actually uh, write that HTML. It would just generate the CSS. You can see my content. Again, scaling it up, scaling it down. You can see that layout change. Scaling it down further, you can see that layout change. Now, keep in mind, this is Edge Reflow Preview, okay? So this is an opportunity, really, for you to get your hands dirty with it, for us to hear from you, to see how you like it, what you want added to it. So feel free to check out the Adobe forums, as well as hit us up on Twitter through Reflow, and me personally, at Paul Tranny. So thanks so much for watching.